Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at part two, how to calculate a tax levied on producers, except in this video, unlike part one, we'll be looking at it with real numbers and values. With that said, let's get into it. So once again, we'll start with our general supply and demand curve. So we'll start with our axes, our supply and demand curves, and then a fully labeled diagram. So we have price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis. We have supply, which is upward sloping in blue, and demand, which is downward sloping in red. And you can see that I've denoted my equilibrium as P star and Q star. So if I'm going to be doing this with real numbers, then I need the actual supply and demand equations that correspond to these lines, and they are right here. So quantity supplied is equal to P minus one, and quantity demanded is equal to 20 minus two P. So my first step is going to be calculating the equilibrium, and I can do this by setting QS equal to QD, and if I do that, I get P minus one equals 20 minus two P. Rearranging this a little bit, I get three P is equal to 21, and then finally, P star must be equal to seven. And if I substitute that back into the supply or demand equations, I will get Q star equal to six. Now that I've got my Q star and P star values, I can substitute them in onto my graph. Now in this video, I'm looking at a per unit tax, which is levied on the supplier. And so this is gonna shift the supply curve to the left. Once again, now that I have two supply curves, I'm gonna denote the new one in green. I'm going to call it supply after tax. Now that I have the supply curve after tax, I'm actually going to have a new equilibrium where the supply after tax intersects with the demand curve. And that's going to be at a new point up here, the new P star and Q tax. If I have a new supply curve, then I obviously need the new supply equation, which is denoted Q supply after tax or QSAT, which is equal to P minus four. Now the magnitude of this per unit tax in my example is $3. So I'm going to calculate the new supply and demand for P star and Q tax. I can do this by equating the new supply and demand equations. So Q supply after tax is equal to QD. Substituting in, I get P minus four is equal to 20 minus two P. Once again, my demand curve has not changed. So my demand equation hasn't changed either. Simplifying further, I get 3P is equal to 24, and then finally P star is equal to eight, and Q tax must be equal to four. And once again, I can get that by plugging in P equals eight into either the QSAT or the QD equations. They'll both give me a Q tax of four. So now I can take my known values and sub them in. So eight and four are my new equilibrium values. So I know that P star is equal to the price that consumers pay for the good, which is $8. And I know that the quantity in equilibrium is going to be equal to four, as per all of the calculations on the right. However, we know there's also $3 in taxes that are being charged to the supplier, so the price that the firms actually receive will be $3 less down here. And so the equation for this point is the price that consumers pay minus the tax, which is equal to the price the firms receive. So this would be eight, which is the price that consumers pay, minus three, which is the tax, and this is obviously equal to five. Now I could also find this by substituting four into the old supply equation. That would give me five as well. So now I'm left with this rectangle that we talked about in part one, and we obviously know this is our tax revenue. Now calculating it is actually quite easy. This is simply a rectangle, and the formula for a rectangle is obviously just length times width. So tax revenue is just equal to length times width, and the length and the width are right here. So substituting those in, I get tax revenue is equal to three times four. And so obviously with some simple algebra, tax revenue is equal to $12 in this example. Now in part one, we also talked about something called deadweight loss. And we know that deadweight loss occurs because our original equilibrium quantity was six and four is strictly less than six, which leaves us with this little triangle right here, which is known as deadweight loss. How do we calculate it? Well, it's actually quite simple because it's just a triangle. And so the area of that triangle is going to be our deadweight loss amount. So deadweight loss is simply equal to half times base times height, which is the formula for a triangle. And my base and my height are right here. So substituting those in, my deadweight loss is equal to one half times three times two, which obviously is simply $3. And that's how we take all of the things we learned about in part one and apply them with real numbers for part two. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.